Welcome to the Cage Siders. I'm your host, Jeremy Long, along with my co-host, Angelo the Couch Reyes. Angelo, always good to see you after a great weekend of fights. I feel like I say that every episode. No, but it's true, right? But it's a great year for fights. Oh, man, 2017 is, is, is starting off with a bang. And uh, we're halfway through it. Everybody's been fighting great. We're getting fights of the year. Historical fights are happening. And a one historical fight that just happened on Saturday night, Errol Spence versus Kell Brook. If you guys haven't seen it yet, go on YouTube. Go get all the illegal YouTube sites that are showing it. <laughs> or just subscribe to Showtime and, and, and watch On Demand, which is what my suggestion would be. And re-watch it, because this is an epic battle that happens over 11 rounds. Errol Spence, of course, scores a TKO stoppage. But there's storylines upon storylines of what was happening in the ebb and the flow and, and how close it actually was for the first six rounds. I mean, it was crazy, man. Right. And you know, our good friend Steve Barrett, he had Kel Brook ahead, uh, you know, uh, after six. Yeah, a lot of folks had Kel Brook winning through six. Uh, it all kind of changed dramatically after that. Errol Spence uh, started uh, taking over. Yeah. Started uh, just, you know, Everything he wanted to throw, he threw, and he landed, and he was doing. He was very aggressive. Yeah, you know, yeah. in the and ring, but uh, you know, uh, very good fight. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, if having Sean Porter there with his dad, because remember how Sean Porter is the one that lost the IBF to Kelbrook. I'm wondering if that mentally or even maybe physically, timing wise, helped uh, Errol Spence because. He really was. There were times where when he got hurt by Kel Brook, he would not give up and he would just get his gaps in there. It was yeah. very cool to see, man. Yeah. It was very cool to see. Yeah, it, it was. It, it very quickly. I don't know a lot of people on Twitter, especially those that were going for Brook or maybe just the haters, the Twitter haters, <laughs> were, were saying that Brook quit in the end. He quit in the no. end. And they're like, oh, he's a quitter. He just took a knee and he, he just quit. Tell me just very quickly, coach. Looking at your fighter going through that, his orbital bone is probably fractured. You don't really know at that point, but it's probably broken at that point. You know, what are you thinking as a coach, and did Brooke make the right move there? And, and, and for me, I got to tell you guys, it, the round before that, if I was in Brooke's corner, the only reason why I would have let it go to the next round is just to get – because I know Brooke wants a chance – and anything can happen, and he still has a, fear, a, a really good pop. So maybe he could have scored a knockdown himself, but I, I, I was actually considering stopping it the round before they actually did stop it. Because um, you can just tell, once it's like a race. Once you know both fighters are at, a, are at an even level, when one person starts to take off, and you know there's no chance for this other person to really catch up, that's when you got to start saying to yourself, no, nah, man, we got to... This is it. This is it. And and uh, yeah, or remember that happened to him on the Golovkin fight, right. and he wanted to keep going. Yeah. So of course, you know, this is already round eleven. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I understand why they the the coaches let it go on. I would have been okay if the coaches the round before would have said, Nah, that's it, Kel. I'm sorry. Yeah. A lot of a lot of armchair quarterbacks, like uh, our good friend Polly Malianaji always says. We're all armchair quarterbacks. At the end of it, Stitch Duran backed it up, said that as well. Uh, Talking about, uh, you know, you let it go. The fighter always wants to go. Yeah. They want to keep going. They're very tough individuals. Uh, but to uh, let your fighter just Get take on uh, yeah. unnecessary damage no. that might affect their long-term health, much less their career going forward. And Kel Brooks no, has a long career ahead yeah. of him. Yeah. A lot of fights uh, still left in oh, this show. Oh, absolutely. Man. absolutely. But, uh, Guys, don't be surprised if Kel Brook wins his next fight if he wins the world title again. I mean, that guy yeah. is that good. Yeah. That was his first loss ever at 147. Yeah. Crazy. And it just shows you how good Errol Spence oh is. Oh, my gosh. What kind of future this young man oh. has. And to be American, too. 147-pound American fighter. That's ah. right, baby. And I just want to say that this American picked that American to win. Unlike this American who picked against him. I went with Ariana Marie. Ariana, I love you so much. But you did me dirty. <laughs> you did me dirty. And right. normally you like that, my friend. <laughs> I don't. I, I got no words anymore. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> UFC had a fight night. Oh. They did have a fight night. Glover Teixeira, uh, Alexander Gustafsson, Stockholm, Sweden. I didn't, uh, I, did, I, I, can you believe it went five? Because the way he was hitting him with those uppercuts early, I was thinking, man, Glover Teixeira is a G for taking some of those punches. Exactly right. But that shows you how how strong Anthony Rumble Johnson yeah. really was because he hit him with one uppercut, yes. you know, very quickly into the first round of their fight, you know, Glover Teixeira. And 
Teixeira was out. Now, Teixeira shows that he has an incredible chin. I mean, he went the distance with uh, John Jones. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, still the guy's kind of still day. controversial. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you know, he, you know, both guys put on a, you know, very entertaining fight and everything. Very but uh, uh, Gustafsson stops him in the fifth round yeah. with an incredible combination. <laughs> Three <laughs> uppercuts <laughs> and a right hand finally ends uh, Glover's night. But what a fight that was! Crazy, crazy. And and and, and uh, how cool do you think that is? By the way, that he proposes to his girlfriend uh, at the end at, at the end of the fight. What do you what do you think about that? What do you think about proposals? Because Jessica Andrade did it. What do you think about proposals after a fight? It's the season to get married. <laughs> I love it. Everyone's getting engaged. <laughs> we just we should open an event company that's and we should true. host fighter weddings. That's that's actually not a bad idea. Hey, okay, whoever wants in. <laughs> Whoever wants in ground floor, you can get with us. But uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I like the way he asked her too in his, right. his English. Do you want to marry me? And she's like, <laughs> I uh, you know, and, and, and Alexander, he's a big, tall guy. Yeah. And his, uh, you know, now fiance is like 6'3". Oh, man. She's 6'3". She, yeah. You know, that baby's going to be huge. <laughs> that baby's going to be huge. They got, they got, she got a D1 scholarship offer right now from Kentucky <laughs> and Tennessee, wrestling. depending on which, if it's you know, maybe Connecticut. I know That's they're true. already filling D1 offers That's for their true. babies. So, I mean, like, a good, good, fun fight. And there were some other fights on the card, but who cares? No, that. no. Not, they, well, they, the guest of sending Tixera, uh, it, it really was, overshadowed. I mean, there were there were some cool ones. I saw somebody, um, tr uh, Marcel uh, Held. I think he tried to do a, that Eminari role, and and just so if you guys want to watch it, that's why you don't do the Eminari <laughs> role because you get knee in the face. <laughs> so. yeah, I saw that and I was like, what the hell is he doing? Oh, he got kicked in the face. Yeah. All right. So when we come back, we're gonna talk to the one, the only legend of boxing, Roy Jones Jr. He joins us next a little bit later on the show. Jason House joins us right here in studio. Stay tuned. We got more with the Cage Siders. Welcome back, Cage Sider fans. And I don't need to tell you who this man is. Yeah, yeah. The legend. The one, the one who is, has inspired so many of us to pick up the sport of boxing or any type of combat sports. The original Matrix. <laughs> Mr. Roy Jones Jr., thank, thank, thank you, you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so first off, real quick, and this is our, our MMA boxing show, so I'm going to pop right off with the first question. We hear... Maybe there's a chance, hopefully, you versus Anderson Silva. Is is that, would that, with all this McGregor Mayweather talk, I remember growing up and always looking up to you and thinking in my head, man, I would be cool. Anderson Silva versus Roy Jones Jr. And even still to this day, yeah. I would pay money to watch that. Still, still, so, would, be, still would be one of the biggest fights uh, on the horizon right now. Um, I mean, we thought about it before, even McGregor and uh, Mayweather did. Is that right now they're at the pinnacle of their career. We're probably beyond our pinnacle, but it's still a bit great fight because he does so many things that I do. He copies and learns so many of my moves, and he's a boxer. He's boxed before. So with that being said, he has experience, plus he's added some of my own stuff in. So now me being older, got to figure out how to avoid my own stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard enough to avoid my stuff anyway, but being older, I got to figure out how to avoid it. So it's a very interesting fight, a uh, fight that people will definitely pay attention to because we're not only fighters, but we're a showman. You know what I'm saying? We don't come out and just give you a fight. We give you a show with a fight. And we'll put it on the line. It may get him knocked out. may get me knocked out, but we try it. We're not afraid to gamble. That's why I put them hand behind my back. You know what I'm saying? We're not afraid to gamble. God put me here to do this. So there's nothing that I won't or can't do in a boxing ring. And I'm sure he feels the same. So he steps into the boxing ring with me. You know, it's heads off. I'm going to go to war. <laughs> that would be awesome. Now, can you, can you see the possibility of... Mayweather and McGregor happening, and if it does, mm -hmm. could we see as the co-feature mm -hmm. Roy Jones? No. I doubt if we do the co-feature because they have enough issues about their own money, mm. and I think our fight is big enough to hold itself. Yes. So I don't know if we would do a co-feature unless they made a really substantial amount of, uh, offer to us both, knowing that that would be the biggest event ever in the history of any sport. Because if you put both of them together, that's a double impact. That would probably outdo anything that has ever happened. As far as sports go, right. So both of those guys, both of those fights could hold their own, though. Okay. All right. Well. So with the way that they're beefing over the money already, I don't see them having enough room to put me and him on there because they wouldn't want to pay us fair. I don't think. Right. I right. I don't know right. that for a fact, but I don't think I don't see how they're gonna split up the money that well. 
Right. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of money there, but you know how people are. Right. So I don't know. Well, I do agree with you that you and Anderson can do it on your own. So you have your own promotional group, mm -hmm. Roy Jones, your boxing. Mm -hmm. You have a stable of fighters, you know, up and coming. Maybe that's something we could see. You and him headline on that and then uh, undercard of all of your. Why not? Uh, why not, right? Why not? So let's talk about that stable. Is there anyone in particular that sticks out of your head? Because I know you love giving back to boxing. Yes, a lot so, of those guys, all, all, all my guys stick out because I love them all. I think they all have good, strong possibilities. Uh, Randy Marino especially, but a lot of them stick out and they all, you know, they, they're good guys, they're good kids, and they want to be something. Right. And with that being said, when you got guys that want to be something, it gives you extra motivation to try to help them accomplish their goals, you know. And it's like one of the best ones I work with is the girl, the chick, I Ikram. Um, she's like, she's, she doesn't look like a fighter because she's a model type lady, huh. but she trains harder than anybody in my gym almost. So it's like, it's hard to not give to them what they're trying to get Freddie. Um, I mean, I got so many kids that give me their all and it's hard for me not to give them my all back. So it's like, I kind of want to get away from the game and give more of my time to these young and up and coming kids because they deserve their chances now. You know what right. I mean? So I want to try to put into them some of the things that I learned to make them better fighters. Wow, and it's so great to hear that you're you're uh, uh, proactive and you you actually like women's boxing. I love women's, man, any kind of combat I love. I don't care who it is. <laughs> That's awesome, that is amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of you being an inspiration, Anthony Joshua, he gave you the coolest shout out right after the fight. He literally looks at you and says, Mr. Unstoppable, and Mr. Unbeatable, no. and still, you you were an inspiration to him growing up. What was that like, Roy? Ninety thousand people just saw Joshua knock out a legend in Vladimir Klitschko, and then Joshua says to you, yeah. "You were my inspiration." Man, it's just to me, honestly, it's like people don't understand that you can go out and make a lot of money, but no amount of money ever can add up to the feeling you get when you see a young kid say that to you. Because now, all the sacrifice, all the hard work, all the chances, the risk you took in boxing. They were worth it because look what it did for that young kid and look where he is now and he showed how he appreciated it and it's like there's no feeling money can't touch that feeling you understand me? that's something that's straight from god wow to that kid you know what i'm saying so it's like it doesn't get any better than that wow well well now the next big fight coming up is the kovalev award mm -hmm. how do you see that next fight happening it'll be a tough fight again people think that uh uh, Andres is gonna walk over Ward. I mean, over left. That's not gonna happen that easy. Now Andres still going to outthink him again. Um, the first fight could have gone either way to me. You understand me? Um, Ward got it. Now I can understand why some judge would have gave the Ward. Oh, they could have gave the Kobe left. I understood why they gave the Kobe left. The fight could have gone either way to me. Both fighters did a great job, superb fight, and I'm looking for them to have a superb fight again. Okay. It's like in fights like that. It's like the fight we got tonight with Chavez and uh, Canelo. You can't go wrong. You understand me? And the cold up war, you can't go wrong. Only thing I don't like about stuff like that is that I want to see the fight be made right away when it happens like that. Uh, Why we've got to wait so long for a rematch? Let's go right. We already know it was a great fight. We already know that we can't really tell who won it. Let's do it again and go and figure it out. Right, right, That's what right. I've been saying. Why are we waiting all this time? Let's well, go and get it right. Well, that was one of the great things about why you're such a legend is you never, like, you know, like the Montel Griffin fight. Right. I remember you saying, no, I want it right now. Right. Give it to me right now. Right. And then you went and knocked away. Right now. <laughs> exactly, right. exactly. And that, and that that is what will bring our our boxing back to, exactly to the right. forefront the and to the public. How some of the old guys that fought for four and five times in less than three or four months? Because if it wasn't a clear cut, one of they wanted it again. And again if they needed to. They just wanted to get the job done. And you gotta love that. That's the school that I learned from. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So when somebody like Anderson says, I want to box for a John Jr. <laughs> you want to do what? Come on, let's, let's do this, you know, so. Well, one one other thing that is bringing boxing back is people like you, legends like you, doing things like the Roy Jones Jr. Invitational. Mm -hmm. We're excited about it here in Vegas, first year ever. You're bringing up your own tournament for amateur boxers. Mm -hmm. And I can almost see that being like our, our Golden Gloves version for exactly. Las Vegas. Exactly. So can you talk to us a little about this yeah. project? Bring, bringing those types of events helps motivate the kids because they're looking up and knowing who, who I am and where I got to in boxing. Inspires them to want to come show me what they're going to be, what they're trying to do in boxing. So, by doing that, it gives them hope. You understand me? Like you said, it's like a New York Golden Gloves yet out here in Vegas. So, it gives them something to fight for. 
And I love it because you get to see the young talent, the young Roy Joneses of tomorrow, the young Floyd Mayweather of tomorrow. So that's what I'm looking for. Wow, that's awesome. Well, one last question, Roy. Um, favorite MMA fighter to watch right now and favorite boxer you like to watch right now? Well, of course, right now I like to watch John Jones. Okay. John Jones is my favorite guy to watch right now. It's for, unless Anderson is fighting. If Anderson is fighting, I always want to see Anderson first. Next is John Jones. Okay. John Jones is a bad boy. So um, that's the truth there. You said favorite boxer? Yeah, favorite boxer. Bacille, right now. Bacille right now. Lomachenko. Okay. Right now, now, see, now, so, right. I, I always talk about Lomachenko on, on our show, mm -hmm. but you're the original. Like, whenever everybody goes, wow, Lomachenko this, Lomachenko that, I'm like, you guys forget that Roy Jones was already doing all of that. Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. but, but again, Roy, you, you're the original Matrix. Yeah. You're an inspiration to so many Thank of you, us. Buddy. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, Kate Sider fans, man, pay attention. Big things happening with Roy Jones Jr. boxing promotions here in Vegas. And of course, Mr. Unbeatable, Mr. Unstoppable. And that body here, Penguin Volume 2, is in the oven right now. It will be out sometime this summer. Ah, uh, that's awesome! I must have forgot! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cage Siders. I'm Jeremy Long, along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. We're joined in house by one of your very close friends. Oh and man, this guy. Oh, here. we've had him on our on our radio podcast, yeah. and now we have him live. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Jason for House. Mr. Thank Jason you. House, Thank Iridium you. Sports Agency. <laughs> Look it up, people. It's the best, biggest one right now for uh, having all the fighters get managed uh, uh, in uh, MMA. I'm, oh, I'm surprised you don't <laughs> have I don't want, where's my hat? Where's my hat and shirt, Jason? Uh, I gotta get you a hat and shirt. <laughs> He's pimping all these brands and everything else, so yeah, I figured he was yeah. on the payroll somehow. So Jason, thank you so much for joining oh, us for uh, in the studio. Yeah, no, no, I mean, he's doing all kinds of awesome projects, and yep. you know, of course, uh, I, you know, there's uh, women that he's doing with uh, Zoila Frosto and yes. uh, I, the other lady's name is Callie Robbins. Ro Robbins, yes. right? Yes. Um, but we're excited because here we are, UFC June 10th, June 17th, and then Big Bellator MSG June yes. 24th. And you know which agency <laughs> has fighters on all three? I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us about uh, June 10th, New Zealand. I'm sure yeah. you'll be there. No, yeah. I'm going to fly out uh, in about a week and a half here. Uh, we're going to have Vince Pichel on the card. He's coming back off a, a three-year layoff. He won his last fight against uh, Anthony and Jaquani out here in the Vegas card last May. So we're, we're bringing him back in. I'm excited. Uh, we have Zach Otto from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He'll be coming in. Um, and then we have Ben Wynn, who's fighting uh, Tim Elliott, which should be, Ooh, should be a really exciting oh, fight yeah, there. Yeah. You know, Tim Ooh. just Tim just got a decision off Lewis Smoka, so I'm excited to, uh, Ooh, to and, and get to get Smoka's that one back. In your in your back, yes, also. yes. In fact, is can we talk? Is Smoka having a thing come out that we're excited to talk about the uh, baseball? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if we can yeah. say it or not. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. 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 <laughs> Lewis is doing a Topps autograph signing. He'll have a new card coming out soon, so that'd be great. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, they reached out to us last week. Dude, so. I love these cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A genius idea. Man. Yeah. Really we were kind of talking about that before yeah. we started. Now, you know, just a nerd, man. Uh, yeah. Not, nerd, uh, nerd level 10, right yeah. here. Now, uh, after up, that New I... Zealand card, and after your fighters do great yes, yes. in the New Zealand card, we got Singapore, yes. which is that the second time that UFC is going to Singapore? Or? I believe so, because I know Russell, this is his second time fighting there. So I know okay. they've at least been there twice. All right. Uh, we got Russell Doan. Uh, he's right. fighting Quan Ho Kwok, uh, who's 9 and 1. Should be a great, right. great fight. Very exciting fight. I think it's going to be a possible fight of the night. And then we got John Tuck fighting Takanara yeah, Gomi. Which, I got the bang, dude. I mean, to fight a legend like that in the sport, I think, is amazing. I know it's an opportunity that John has wanted for a long time, so we're very grateful for the UFC. That's I mean, crazy. I think it's a it's gonna be an exciting night for us. Wow! Yeah. Is the is the main event on Singapore a Holly Holm Betch go ahead? Or? I believe so. Wow! Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Quick, who would you bet on that one? Holly Holm or Betch go ahead? <laughs> I'm gonna go Holly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's our little quick. Who would you? <laughs> Because uh, according to Twitter, <laughs> she's planning on standing and banging with Holly, and that is not yeah, a good I don't recipe. think she's going to be doing that at all. Yeah. Says, I definitely Dr. don't think that uh, Taco uh, Gomi should be standing and banging with uh, John Tuck. Tuck. No. That's a bad idea. No, no, no. John Tuck will look. knock you out yeah. for sure. He'll put yeah. them damn hands on you. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then our, our, the big one that's coming up, uh, Bellator. Yes. Oh, yes. man, Madison Square Garden, Bellator. I'm excited about that card. I know you're super excited about yep. that card. And you have <laughs> going against Michael Chandler. Yes. Say his name. Brent Primus. 
Brent Primus. Yes, yes. We said it right. I kept calling him Primus, like the band. I know, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Anything. Optimus yeah. Primus. Yeah. But, you know, what's, uh, I guess what's uh, what's his mindset? Because right now he's kind of the guy that's flying under the radar. People are expecting yeah, a, a walkover. I, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that Brent was signed to Bellator when he was only 2-0. Wow. So he's been in the organization a long time. He's one of the, from the original uh, prospects that they were developing. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been on a great streak, obviously, still undefeated. Uh, we had discussed this fight, had been in talks with Bellator a couple times. It didn't really pan itself out. You know, there went some different directions, kind of just injuries, these, those types of things. Um, so when the phone call came, you know, I, it wasn't like Brent wasn't ready for it, not that he ever thought about it. You know, he's definitely ready for this opportunity. Um, he's actually doing his camp down in uh, Timoyama in Irvine, California. Uh, so he's training a lot of good guys down there, Ooh, and uh, you nice. know, I'm, I'm really excited for him. I think this is uh, going to be his night, his rocky now, moment. Now, I know you're on the premise side, but, yes. you know, just analytically say, because he's a martial artist, you know, yes, does yes. jiu-jitsu. He's, he's had a couple of good striking lessons <laughs> with, with a with few certain people. Coach, with a certain coach. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but uh, in your head, how does premise beat Chandler? What style-wise? Like, how do you see it? I think we have to make it ugly. You okay. Know? Yeah, we're going to have to win, win the wars against the cage and the clinch. Um, you know, I think uh, our striking game plan is going to be on point. I think we see some some things there that we'll be, be able to execute. And, you know, that's all I can really say for you. Uh, all right, man. I'm, I'm betting premise. When we did the who would you bet on for uh, Bellator, I'm betting. You, you know you know what, guys? I, I always say this. I feel like in, in combat sports, uh, the most dangerous opponent is one one has nothing to lose. Mm. Uh, and I think whenever you, you put someone else, like, you know, Brent's going in the none lose. We're loose. We're calm. Yeah. We're, we're ready to go. Like for us, it's just going to be a great night, you know, for his family. He's got a beautiful wife with a, with a baby on the way. He's going to have a boy. So nice. we're real excited for that's him. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. No. So um, we're, we're excited. And that's yeah. awesome. And, and, and you see, and look, in the short amount of time that we're talking to Jason House, <laughs> see how much information he knows about every single client, every yeah. single fighter he has. And I know it sounds like I'm pumping up this guy, but I'm <laughs> telling you, you gotta just pump up good stuff, right? Or, if, you want, if, you, if you had a great steak, you gotta talk about how great the steak yeah. was. Well, Jason, yeah. thank yeah. you so much for joining us, no, man. We really you. do appreciate dropping knowledge bombs in here, yeah, man. You. And you know what, during the commercial break, you know, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get your stories on coach here. Okay. Uh, black okay. Bell. Okay. Not that I need <laughs> it, but Black <laughs> Bell. All right, stay with us. After the break, we're gonna have more from the Cage Siders. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long, along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. Angelo, we got a, a great another weekend of fights. I love saying that at the beginning of the and show. It, it, well, I mean, again, here we are, UFC, mm -hmm. UFC Rio. Yeah. And we finally get to see Jose Aldo, or as, as Max Holloway's been saying, where's... Aldo. Where's, Where's Aldo? Aldo? Right. Where in the world? Well, he's in Rio, waiting for you, Max. And Max Holloway, um, you know, it's the interim belt thing. But you and I both know it's really number one contender versus the champion, uh, Jose Aldo. So I, I'm looking forward to this fight. I, I think that given how Jose Aldo looked against Frankie Edgar in UFC 200, I'm going all the way on this one, man. I mean, I, I you know I love Max Holloway, and I hate to go against uh, uh, you know my Hawaiian friend there, but uh, Jose Aldo. I'm saying Jose, Jose Aldo. Aldo. Okay. Yeah, you know there are some guys that you know are kryptonite to other guys. Conor McGregor may be Jose's kryptonite, just like Gene Tunney was Jack Dempsey's kryptonite okay. years and years ago. Very if you nice. follow, you yeah. like that segue there, huh? All right. I, you know, and so I'm gonna go with the champ here. He's just he looks unbeatable against other anyone who's not named Conor. Yeah. He looks unbeatable. So, you know, I, I like the, the chances. This is a really solid card. Uh, Carolina and, and Claudia, Claudia are That's fighting. That's going to be a heck of a war. And, and, uh, and if you're into it, Vitor and Nate Marquardt yeah. will get out there and all roid it up and do their thing. You th <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Let's say Vitor wins. That's his last fight with the UFC. Does he renew? Does he quit and get a different job for He's the done. UFC? Or does he go to Bellator? He's going somewhere. It's not going to be the UFC. Okay. Maybe Bellator. They, they're in the given washed up fighters contracts that's something. wrong yeah, yeah you're gonna is. say that about him though. thank you so much for joining us we're gonna see you next week thank you all of our guests for joining us too roy jones jr jason house we'll see you next week right yeah, yeah i we'll hope so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> not after those comments about ariana yeah i know right <laughs> Jeez. Oh.